For more depth on all of this, from Vero Beach, Florida, is retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Scott Kane. Colonel Kane, thanks for joining us. As we've noted, this is the first time that a private company is sending NASA astronauts into space on American soil. Just give us a sense of how significant this feat is. Well, I, I think it's incredibly significant because, uh, first of all, we, we used to be the leaders in space, and uh, we gave up that leadership role nine years ago when we uh, stopped sending, sending our astronauts uh, from our launch pads. So to, to take this step gives us the opportunity to take that leadership role back, and that's where we rightfully belong in space, uh, instead of uh, he's ceding it to the Russians and the Chinese. Well, NASA began farming out construction of rockets to the private sector. I'm wondering if you believe that private companies are better equipped to deliver uh, to deliver on what NASA previously provided. Well, I think it's a great idea. The uh, the beauty of our country is that uh, we we capitalize on the innovative spirit and the entrepreneurial spirit of our, of our Americans. The uh, the great thing that the that the government does is it kind of sets the table. And for 50 years, the, the United States had the, the table set by NASA, then um, the military and the government, and they provided the, the opportunities for our uh, companies and entrepreneurs to learn the, the way to do things. And, and the beauty of, of how we're doing it now is that, uh, from my experience, uh, 30 years in the Air Force, the, the government isn't necessarily as efficient as uh, the private sector is. And so... We, we've set the table, and now the private sector is going to take take the ball and run with it, and and use the the kind of tools they have at their disposal to to be a little more efficient, to to find innovative ways to do some of the same things, and to uh, to be unbounded by government rules and regulations. And not to say that those rules and regulations aren't important. However, the the private sector you know sees things from a, a different viewpoint, and and I think they're going to do a great job. Of taking manned spaceflight to, to the next uh, next level by by uh, uh, taking the lead in this environment. Well, let's talk about what that next level might be. I know one of the criticisms of the space program before the shuttle uh, was was shut down um, was that it was essentially just driving the same route back and forth between the International Space Station. Um, do we think that, that these private companies are going to deliver on the promise of exploration of Mars, perhaps even that first human who's going to be uh, colonizing Mars? Well, you never know. The, uh, if you look back hundreds of years ago, the, uh, the, you know, nobody would have ever dreamed that, that people would have sailed across the ocean to, uh, to North America. Um, it, you know, 200 years ago, people wouldn't have dreamed of, of crossing uh, the mountains to the west coast of the United States. Uh, that, that's what, uh, once again, that entrepreneurial spirit does, is it, it provides opportunities. And, and, and people, particularly in our country, have this great capacity to, for imagination and dreaming and to get things accomplished that nobody ever thought they would be able to get accomplished. So if I were to, to you know, use my crystal ball, I would say, uh, hold on, because I think that this is, uh, this is just the beginning of, uh, of that opportunity to, to take man to, you know, to places beyond the moon. To the, I would not be surprised if uh, we have, have people uh, living on Mars uh, in, inside of the next 50 years. Oh, well, I love I love the entrepreneurial spirit, the the thinking outside the box uh, nature of space explorers. And, and Colonel, you're a former Air Force pilot with thousands of flight hours under your belt. I see you even have a propeller hanging up behind you. Uh, the astronauts flying today are also veteran pilots. How does the training of being a pilot in the Air Force translate into becoming a successful astronaut? Well, I, I think that uh, the what you learn as being a military pilot is is valuable throughout your life because you learn that first of all you can do something that uh, you just dreamed of doing. Um, most uh, most of us that went to pilot training, they we just dreamed of the opportunity to fly and fly fast, and uh, we went through some very intense training. And within a year, you are you are a jet pilot who can go to the speed of sound and do something that you just dreamed about doing a year later. And then you learn a lot of great skills of how to be disciplined about what you do, to, 
to have situational awareness of what's going on around you, to, to follow checklists, uh, but to also be ready for any contingency. And so all of those, those tools that a, uh, a pilot learns um, will be incredibly valuable to uh, take it that next step to the, the ultimate high ground, which is space, uh, where you have the ultimate situational awareness. You get to see the whole Earth, which, to be honest with you, I wish I had the opportunity to do what those two men are about to do now. I am with you on, on wishing and dreaming about that. The closest I ever came was that zero-G flight, the, the vomit. <laughs> what, 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 what do you guys call that? The vomit uh, the, comet? The, the, yeah, the... <laughs> but moments of, of weightlessness, that is, that is impressive. And the idea of being able to see the Earth from afar, I can't even imagine. Um, let's talk about President Trump's proposed Space Force. Can you uh, give our viewers a little bit more information about this? How could it benefit the safety and security of the United States? And, and where exactly does that proposal live right now? Well, obviously, we stood up a Space Force in the, in the last year. So it's, it's moving forward. It's moving forward rapidly. Um, personally, I've been a prom proponent of the Space Force since uh, I, I studied at the School of Advanced Air and Space Studies at Maxwell Air Force Base. The, uh, um, I think that the great thing that the president has done is he's unleashed the, the power of space by giving professional um, space officers the, the control of that environment for our, uh, our country. Um, the, the problem I believe we, we have as we move forward in any new realm is that somebody is in charge that doesn't fully understand it. Uh, it was the same thing with the Air Force when the Army owned the Army Air Corps. Uh, when the Ar Army let go and the Air Force uh, stood up in 1947, that's when we really started moving forward very rapidly and understood fully how to, to, uh, to fly, fight, and win in the, in the air realm. Well, we're doing the same thing now by unleashing that, uh, that opportunity for space officers and space enlisted men and women to, to be professionals in their arena and to understand the ultimate high ground like nobody else can and be uh, unconstrained by other forces. So uh, I think having a, a space force is a great thing. And I think that uh, over time, it will uh, pay huge dividends uh, not just in the military realm, but in the civilian realm as well, because we, we, will, we will have great understanding of the capabilities and uh, threats and, and uh, requirements of having a great space force. Well, thank you so much for joining us and watching with us, Colonel Kane.